Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Sarah Abiola Ojo. We're going to be going through the Nakoski approach to menstrual irregularities slash amenorrhea. This presentation is for educational purposes only. Firstly, the agenda. We're going to be defining what amenorrhea is slash the menstrual irregularities. Thereafter, we'll take the Nakoski approach. Menorrhea, it's simply defined as a cessation of menstruation. It can be broadly classified into the primary and the secondary amenorrhea. The primary is the absence of menstruation at age 16 with secondary sexual characteristics or no menstruation at 14 years with absent secondary sexual characteristics. Secondary amenorrhea can be defined as the absence of menstruation in a woman previously menstruating for more than six months or three cycles. Going to menstrual irregularities, which can also be named as abnormal uterine bleeding, there are two major causes, which are the gynecological and the non-gynecological. Under the gynecological, we have menorrhagia. Examples of where you can have menorrhagia are hormone imbalance, fibroids, uterine polyps, adenomyosis, and one with copper intrauterine device. A second category under the gynecological causes is metorrhagia or Menometorrhagia. Causes of this include trauma, sexual abuse, benign growths like uterine, cervical, and vaginal. It could also be pregnancy related, weight loss, exercise, excessive, and stress also come under this category. Going to the non gynecological, there are five major headings here. For the endocrine, hyper or hypothyroidism could be a cause. We could also have insulin resistance as seen in polycystic ovarian syndrome. Bloody dyscrasias could be another cause of menstrual irregularities. For one who has coagulopathies, platelet abnormalities, leukemia, or hematologic malignancy. Some drugs such as steroids, spironolactone, neuroleptics, and much more could also cause abnormal uterine bleeding. The causes can be summarized under the seven major headings. Going to the Narkoski approach, when you're stationed at your door and the bell rings, the first thing is to immediately turn and read the question on the door carefully. You're going to be given a booklet and a piece of paper on which you should write the name of the patient, the age of the patient and the task at hand. When the bell rings, you knock the door and you enter the room. Sanitize your hands, greet the examiner quickly, and move on to the simulator. Introduce yourself to the simulator. This is the tax at hand. A 45-year-old Mary White is here on account of cessation of her period for six months. In the next eight minutes, take a detailed history. Thereafter, answer post-encounter questions. This is the outline we're going to be following. For the presenting complaint, it is cessation of menstruation for six months, which is a significant period of time. So you want to know, has the patient sought medical advice before now? Are there any recent changes you now go to the analysis of the presenting complaint. 
has there been irregular bleeding or spotting? Because of the peculiarity of the presenting complaint, the next thing should be the menstrual history. You want to know at what age did this patient attain menarche? Menarche being the first time the person experienced menstruation. Thereafter, has the menses been regular? How often has this patient been having menses? You want to know how long the period of the patient normally would last. You also want to know the cycle length of the patient. To quantify the amount, how many parts do you use per day is the right question. Thereafter, does the patient experience pain during period, which is called dysmenorrhea? Does the patient bleed in between periods? And when was the last menstrual period? Is it possible that the patient you have in front of you is pregnant? And how can we know? Attributed symptoms. You want to ask, has this patient been experiencing any nausea? any vomiting, breast engorgement, or any frequency in urination. Has the patient been pregnant previously? Has the patient had any abortions? You also want to rule out constitutional symptoms, which include fever, night sweats, anorexia, weight loss, and lumps and bumps in any part of the body. So on down to the differentials, there are four major headings here talking about the causes that could come from the hypothalamus in the brain. You want to know, is this patient under stress? Has the patient been engaging in excessive exercise? Does the patient have any concerns about how it? Next in line is pituitary causes which can be manifested by headaches, early morning vomiting, visual changes, milk secretions from the breast, thyroid disease, which could come as heat or cold intolerance, change in bowel movements, as well as the skin. Is it moist or dry? Ovarian causes. Does the patient have ichneum? Has the patient been experiencing any excessive hair growth? Is there a history of chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or has there been any change in the voice of the patient? Lastly, you want to rule out uterine causes of menstrual irregularities, some of which are surgical procedures such as dilation and curettage. Pelvic surgeries and instrumentations could also be a cause of menstrual irregularities. Then go to the gynecological history. Is this patient on any form of contraception such as oral contraceptive pills, intrauterine device, hormone replacement therapy in the past, or has this patient ever had a mammogram? You also want to know, when was this patient's last pap smear and was it normal? The obstetric history could also play a role. Like we mentioned before, previous pregnancies, abortions, and how many. Going to the sexual history of this patient, you want to know how many partners has this patient had in the last six months to one year? When did this patient commence sexual activity? Has this patient been practicing safe sex? Is there any history of sexually transmitted infections in this patient? Past medical history. 
Has this patient been managed in the past for any medical conditions such as high blood pressure or diabetes mellitus? Has this patient ever had a psychiatric illness? How about medications or a recent use of antibiotics? You also want to go to the past surgery history, asking for any procedures in the past. A positive family history of polycystic ovarian syndrome is very important or a family history of infertility. The social history. How does this patient support herself? What occupation does this patient do? Does she smoke, take alcohol, or use recreational drugs? Lastly, you want to be able to summarize the essential positives and negatives. Eight minutes are over and you go on to the post encounter questions. What could you what could be the differentials which we have stated in the earlier parts of this video? Thereafter, what investigations would you order? Beta HCG, progesterone challenge test, hormonal assay, which includes estrogen, progesterone, FSH, LH, prolactin, TSH, serum testosterone, which are total and free. You could also do an abdominal ultrasound scan, pelvic ultrasound scan, and a complete blood count. That is the end of your Narkoski station. Remember to be calm. Thank you.